I'm going to be different than the last talk because the last talk worries about you and I don't care about you. Okay, so we're going to start that way. Um, so look what I'm going to do with the F-15. There's the grid. I'm going to bomb it. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy everything. Except for that little person right there who's going to hold their own energy. So you, actually, I'm, I'm not at odds at all of, about what you heard, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But you can't get safer if you, have your, you control your own energy. And you can't get cleaner, and you can't. Everything goes to the individual. And so I want to talk to you about personalized energy. And I just want to throw some quick numbers up here, not a lot. But I do a lot of global energy calculations, and a lot of people use my numbers, and then they mess it up. So I'm going to tell you what, what I did, because you've got to understand what the challenge is, and then you're going to see how I'm in line with Masood, what he just talked about. And that is right now you're using 14 terawatts. The terawatt's a trillion watts, and that's a big light bulb, all right? And that's what you're burning at this second. So it's burn rate, energy per unit time. You don't need to worry about is no Sarah talking about a day or a year. So that's how much energy you're burning. And you're going to need 16 in the next 42 years. So close your eyes and think about 42 years from now. I'll be dead, but you know there's a lot of kids around. So just close your eyes. Think about a kid right now that you like, and this is going to be their future. Okay? And it's going to be a bad future if, it's, if you look at these numbers. Because that number right there, the five to seven terawatts, is the entire, entire crop basis of the world. And I collected it and burned it to CO2 and water. You can't get any more energy out of crops. Fastest growing crops in the world, right? That's because photosynthesis has a limit of 10%. The best crops grow at 1%. You can't do better. Um, I took all the wind. It's only 10 meters above the ground. You should go higher. If you take the entire lower atmosphere, there's 60 terawatts, but you've got to take out the entire atmosphere. That's the Stanford study. But if you're at 10 meters, that's all the wind energy. Here's nuclear. If I want 8, because I've got to get to 16, so if we'll go 8 plus 7 plus some wind, and I'll barely get there. Um, 8 terawatts, we can do this calculation in real time. Um, eight terawatts, a power plant puts out a gigawatt. Eight terawatts divided by a gigawatt's 8,000. 40 years from now, 8,000 divided by 40 is 200. You've got to build me 200 power plants every year to get eight terawatts. If you did it linearly, that's one every one and a half days. And then when you're done, you've got to decommission the one you're building now because they're only ready for 50 years, and then you've got to keep, build, keep building. So you're building forever to get half of your energy that I'll need in the future, 200 a year forever to get me eight terawatts with nuclear. Um, <clears throat> now, where do I get in line with Masood? Because right here, this is 14 terawatts. I'm saying you're going to need 16, and then you've got to figure out why do you need 16. The first assumption I made is that you guys would do all the right thing and listen to him and save 100% of the energy you're using today. 100%. And then I still need 16. If you want to be dummies and not listen to him, you've got to give me 45 terawatts, not 30. All right? So you, in the legacy world, I want you to save every bit of your energy and you still have to give me 16 terawatts. And you just saw what it's going to take to get there. Now, where is that coming from? So now you want to try to solve the energy problem. You better start thinking, where, where should you attack? And, and the place it's coming from is 3 billion people don't have energy, and 3 billion people haven't been born yet. Right? So since I started speaking, um, probably, let me just see, I have, I have 20 minutes. So you'll have in the, by the, in the, by the time I'm done speaking, there'll be 100,000 100, people born into the world right now, okay? They're driving your energy need, and there's 3 billion who don't have it. And so if you want to go after the energy problem, and I assume you'll do the right thing, which you won't, because we always mess up, um, I am going to say even if you do, 
I need to, I still won't take care of this energy problem unless I go and help people, what I call non-legacy, people without stuff, right? And so therefore, what I want to do is go after, I don't even like saying non-developed, just say people without stuff, and that means I should probably not do what the Department of Energy does all the time, which takes big systems and then tries to make them tinier, and then they say it's too costly. And that's costly because Usually I get so many people mad they start rushing the stage. I was a little nervous there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if, if it's going to be really costly, what you can't do is just make something tiny because there's this thing called balance of systems. So you've got to start from the bottom and work up. And if you don't, I guarantee it will always be too costly. That's what the DOE always tells you they're right. That's what all these dumb firms that you can get their estimates about where energy will be in the future. They, by the way, you spend a lot of money, they just get on Google and they do division. So don't listen to them all the time. So if you want to start doing something, I'm going to get to this manufacturing idea, okay, which you heard about earlier. I need to manufacture in the way I'm going to take care of the scaling problems. I'm going to do things really well for you at the individual level and just make a lot of it. I want to put this up. If you take care of the energy problem, I, you know, I, I don't like listening to how I go to Davos a lot. It's so dumb because they talk about water here and energy here and other stuff there. They're all integrated. If you take care, if you look at some of these numbers, seven trillion gallons of water are used in power generation. You're losing half a gallon of water down the drain for every kilowatt you make. So if you take care of the energy problem, you go a long way to solving the water problem. Right? Don't, don't separate them. Um, by the way, everybody always wants, they assume research scientists, academician, how do you solve the energy problem? Give Dan Nocera lots of money. That's what they're always expecting, right? How would you do it, though, now that you understand this? If you want to make the biggest impact, what would you do? Stop three billion people from being born. You know how do you do that? You social engineer. This is very drastic. Because I'm on web pages, they all blog me to death about being an awful and evil human. I would want to educate poor females. Wow. Okay? You educate poor females, birth rates drop like a rock. So if you want to make a big impact on energy, and you don't know what to do, start educating poor females. Again, oh boy, thanks. I guess I didn't have to tell you guys. But I, don't, don't clap too loud, because I said you guys always mess it up, so you won't. So you're going to have to need me after all. OK. Just when it sounds good. OK, it's all down the tubes again. So you heard about solar. Um, even if you get the cheapest solar panels in the world, you're still doomed because you guys don't like living when the sun goes down, or you do like living when the sun goes down. So you need energy, so you need storage. Let me do something with elect. We heard about electrons. The problem with electrons is they have a negative charge, and this is a negative charge, and they don't like getting near each other. So here's the energy that you get because i got to store the sun now. So I'm going to get the sun at the individual level, give it to you, and you got to store it at night. It's going to be cheap because it's for the non-legacy world. Don't let anybody tell you batteries are going to get better. They can't. Physically impossible. Okay? And let me tell you why. I'm a chemist, so listen to me now. Um, electron comes on metal. Electron comes on metal. Electron comes on metal with oxygen in between. Unless I have a special way to compress matter and not make it more dense, battery energy storage can never go up, ever. All right, so don't let people tell you that. What they are telling you that's important is what's called power density. If you want it in your car, you're going to have to go from zero to 60 in four seconds. Then you need to get the energy in and out quickly. But you're still going to have to get in that Tesla with its thousands of pounds of batteries and that's what you're going to have to drive. If you're going to go with Shah Agassi in Israel, you better be ready every 20 kilometers to replug in or dump your battery pack, okay? And he's not going to make it better, sorry. Can't, can't help physical laws of nature. 
All right? So they're, they're lousy, 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 lousy. Why do we use fuels? You already figured it out. You've been doing it for 100 years. You use fuels because they have lots of energy. All right? You could have been using batteries. You chose not to. You could have used lots of other energy. So when push comes to shove, you get a lot of energy out of uh, fuels, and that's because I can put electrons in very tiny volumes of space. So it is electrons again, but if you're a scientist and you remember your when you take an electron and you put an electron opposite spin, they pair and they make a bond, and that's the smallest area you can put energy. So that's why bonds work. 